Let's start creating our RTS, starting with some camera controls. All right, so I just have a 2D scene here, and I just put a sprite in the middle, just using the default icon, just so I can go ahead and get a idea of of course, just make sure the camera's actually moving and everything's working uh, the way it's intended. All right, because if we're just looking at a gray background, we're not even going to be able to tell if we're moving. So the sprite's just there to keep us uh, in check to make sure things are working. You get it, right? Now, project and our project settings. I've gone ahead and I've created a few controls. Let's delete the ones I don't need. And we're just going to have a scroll up and a scroll down of which I'm using my mouse wheel up and down. Those are the only controls we're going to need to map out with the input mapper today. So let's go ahead and go to our camera 2D and put a script on it. All right, so you can see right here at the start that I have I've exported categories to keep this a little organized. I have a speed variable that's set as five. You can, we can tweak that later on when we actually know the scale of uh, whatever art uh, I'm going to use, whatever art you're going to use. This way we can change this later. And this sensitivity variable, it's being set at 20 for now. Of course, we can tweak it later or you can tweak it uh, after we get the rest of the code in, whatever to whatever feels better for you. But what this is basically going to do is this is going to allow us to determine how close our mouse has to get to the edge of our window in order for the camera to actually move. Now, here up here in the ready, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to enable position smoothing. And on the camera, you can find this inside the inspector if you wanted to. I'm just going to do it here in code. Position smoothing enabled. Set to true. And you can tweak with the speed value of that. Again, either in the inspector or right here in the ready as soon as we set it, which will just be position smoothing. Whoops. Speed. The default is 5. But you can go ahead if you want. You know, tweak it to maybe a 2. Uh, 10 might be a little too slidey. Uh, in fact, five might be a little too slidey for some people, but I'm just going to leave it like that. Let's set this as being enabled. And our process. This is where the meat of our code is going to be today. All right, now I'm using underscore delta just so we don't get that warning about unused variable. And of course, I could just come up here and we could do warning ignore and just look for the unused uh, variable this way. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Uh, right there, unused parameter. So we could just go like this and then we don't have to put an underscore in there. And that would be perfectly fine, but I'm just going to use the underscore here. All right, so how do we actually get this to do to move? Well, what we want to happen, if I go ahead and run this, is our sprite is down there for us to move with or to keep an eye on to make sure that we're moving. And what we want to do is move our mouse to the edge and that's going to move our camera around. Now, of course, we could take an area and place it around all four corners. And when our mouse enters it, then we can move in that direction. That would work. That would be perfectly fine. But we've done that kind of thing before with uh, the scrolling feature on the inventory video that we did. Uh, was it the beginning of this year or close to the end of last year? So I'm going to show you how to do this with your mouse going towards the edges of the screen itself. I'm going to show you how to go about that in a different way. That way, hopefully, you guys can learn a little more instead of just recycling things that we've already shown on uh, the videos in the past. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and first thing we need to do is get our mouse position. 
So I'm going to get my mouse position. That's of course is going to be a vector two. And we're going to get view port. Uh, get mouse position. Um, is this not a plus? Oh, whoops. My mistake. That should be an underscore. Here we go. It's going to say I'm pretty sure that's a vector two. All right. So that's going to get us our mouse position. And notice we're not getting the global position or anything. The local is perfectly fine here. Um, next, we're going to get the size of our actual viewport. So we're going to go ahead and get our viewport size, which is a nether, another vector two, which is just going to be get viewport dot size. All right. So now that we have this, these two main things, we can now go ahead and set the threshold. All right, so going about this, these are gonna be a, I'll show you how to do this, left var, left threshold. Um, this will just be equal to our sensitivity. And again, we're gonna have var right threshold and that'll be equal to our uh, viewport size, viewport size dot X minus our sensitivity. And we're going to do the same thing for the top and bottom here for our up and down. All right. So our thresholds should look like this. Right. Uh, now the next thing now that we have our thresholds we have the size we have our mouse position We can now determine whether or not our mouse is near the edges of our screen All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just create a few variables here. This is just gonna be var near left edge And to give you an idea this is gonna be equal to mouse position dot x uh, less than our left threshold. And we're going to do the same thing with the right edge, top edge, bottom edge, and check with those thresholds as well. All right, so I've gone ahead and just to, just in case uh, anyone wants to use floats in that with this, um, I've, I've gone back and changed my thresholds from casting them as ints to casting them as floats. And our near left, right, top, and bottom edge are going to be bulls. So we're either going to get back a true or false on our statement of whether or not the mouse position is less than the left threshold, greater than the right threshold, less than top threshold, and greater than the bottom threshold. So with this information, we now have where our mouse is, the size of our viewport what our threshold is on all four sides and then whether our, or not our mouse is within that threshold all right so at this point we can now just come in and we can test this out to make sure things are working we can go ahead and we can just say if near left edge and we can just print out i'm on the left edge and if you were to go ahead and run that now and we move our mouse to the right side, nothing, top, nothing, bottom, nothing. But as soon as we move it to the left, we're going to see that printed out in our console. All right. Now you notice how close I had to get with the mouse. I had to put it like right on the edge of the window. That's related to that sensitivity at the top, which is help defining our threshold. So with 20, we have to have it all the way up here. If we had on something like 200, then we would only have to move our mouse maybe, maybe around here. So that's gonna be uh, dependent on you. And again, that's something that we can tweak later. Um, once you have the art that you're gonna use for scale. So I'm just gonna leave mine on 20. And now that we have our left edge uh, working, 
we can go ahead and check uh, if our if we're near the left, right, top, or bottom edge. So we have all four sides uh, defined with our if and else if statements. So all we have to do now at this point is do the moving of our camera. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable called direction, which is going to be a vector two. And simply put, uh, for going left, we're just going to have uh, minus one zero. And we can copy this into all of them. So going right, we're going to have positive one and zero. At the top, uh, we are going to have zero and minus one. And on the bottom edge, we're going to have zero and positive one. All right. And then next, we're just going to have position plus equals direction times speed. And we can set this on all of them if we wanted. And of course, we could come in and we can clean this up so we don't have to uh, create this direction variable on all of these, of course. Uh, but either way, it's perfectly fine. If we go ahead and run this, you can see now if we move our mouse to the edge of the screen, we can now move. And you see how we have that nice, smooth slowdown? Uh, when we move our mouse away, that's where the smooth uh, position is coming from, from our ready. So if I had that set on false and we did that, you see, we just come to a an instant stop, which doesn't look as good. So I'm going to recommend that you put that on. All right. So we can now move our camera around. Now, what about the zoom? Well, for our zoom functionality, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use the input function that's built in. Two spaces between the end of my last function and on my new one. Um, I'm not going to use event, so I'm just going to put an underscore at the beginning of that parameter. Give myself a little bit of space here. And we can go ahead and check. So if input dot is action pressed. And we'll go ahead and we'll use scroll up first. Then what we're going to do is we're going to get the zoom of our camera. So we're going to get the X axis here or the X value because zoom is a vector too. And we're going to set this equal to the a min function and what this is basically going to do is this allows us to put in uh hold on we want to use min f here there we go for the floats um so what this will allow us to do is we can put in two numbers here and whichever number is smaller that's the one that we're going to assign to zoom.x so, for example, if we had 0.1 here and 0, then this is going to be set to 0 because that is the smaller number, the 2. So, if we were to be zooming in and say we want to do 2 for the maximum here, which is something that we should actually define back up top. All right, so export var max zoom. And I'll probably come back and rename some of these, some of my variables here just to make them a little more cohesive <laughs> as we go through. Um, but come down here, float, all right. And we'll set it to a two. So now I can go ahead and I can just set this out max zoom and we can change this anytime all right so we obviously don't want to set this to 0.1 right because we want a new value every time so for the first argument here of our min function we're just going to have our zoom dot x whatever it is currently 
and we're gonna say plus that 0.1 so now whenever we zoom in we're gonna increase by 0.1 every time so we're gonna start at 1 and 1.1 1.2 1.3 1.4 and so on and since we're picking the smaller number with this min function it is always going to be the result of this that is until we hit uh, once we get to 1.9 once we try to zoom in again, we're going to roll over to 2.0. Now, both of these numbers are exactly the same at, the, at this point because max zoom we have set at 2. So it doesn't really matter. It's going to be set to 2. And once we try to zoom in again, uh, the value will roll over and go 2.1. And then this function is going to take a look at that. Uh, when it does hit 2.1, it's say no, that's too big. Uh, so we're going to go with this smaller number here, our max zoom. And... Our X property is going to be set to that too. So it's never going to exceed uh, two. And all we have to do here is since we need to keep this as a proper scale, we'll just say zoom dot Y is equal to zoom dot X. All right. So next what we'll do is we'll handle the uh, zoom out portion of that. Now we can do this as we can just do this as another if statement. Uh, we can do this as an else if, if you would like. Uh, it doesn't really matter in this case, um, but I'll go ahead and I'll make it an else if. Input dot is action pressed, scroll down, and we're just gonna do the same thing that we did up here. Only gonna say minus, uh, our 0 0.1 and we'll go back up and we'll create a minimum zoom here so min zoom I'm gonna say uh, 0 0.1 so a scale of 0 0.1 is the furthest I'll be able to zoom out and instead of min when we're zooming out we're actually going to use max f so it's going to do the same thing, but it's going to pick the larger number. All right, so now when we run it, we can take a look. We can move our mouse near the edge so we can move around with our camera. All four edges work. And when we scroll with our mouse, you see we can zoom out and we're going to eventually hit a limit. Now, again, this looks pretty small here, but we don't know. This might be huge. This might be itty bitty. We can tweak these numbers when we have the actual art. So we have the actual scale of the project. Um, and when we zoom in again, we're going to eventually just hit a cap and we cannot zoom in any more from here. All right. So there you go. We have ourselves some basic camera controls. We can move around smoothly around our edges and we can zoom in. And again, if I come up and change the sensitivity to 200, you can go ahead and take note. Uh, with 200 just exactly where my mouse starts to trigger that so there you go my mouse triggers it right around here just a, just a little bit to the right from here it will trigger so 200 is kind of insane for a threshold um so i would stick with that 20 uh, maybe 40 is probably the cap the maximum uh, number that i would use for that uh, but that's up to you. But there you go. There are some basic camera movement. Hopefully you learned something with uh, detecting the edges of your screen. Uh, with the way we're moving the camera here. Uh, as opposed to using something like areas. Alright, before I ramble on any further. Take care. Have yourselves a good one. And next time. Uh, unless I can think of anything that I want to throw in here with the camera to get us up and moving, uh, we'll probably uh, put some art in here and start looking at uh, maybe a basic placement system. Something different than, than the placement system we've already done on the channel. All right, take care. Have yourselves a good one. You got any ideas of things that you want to see in the future? Leave a comment down below, and I'll see you next time.